Hello everyone, welcome back to Key Comics Market Watch. I'm happy to have y'all join me for another haul video. Today I actually went to Second and Charles, um, out Manassas, Virginia. Uh, this is the first time I've been to the Second and Charles that they have out there and I was able to be out there because I had just dropped the passenger off uh, from me working Lyft and as soon as I saw the second Charles, I was like, let me go in there and see what they got. So I wound up spending an hour in there, and um, I think I found a couple of good things. I will say this. I was happy to be able to find, uh, it was two new books that came out last Wednesday that I was able to find. That I, um, I did get one of them on Wednesday, but I only got one copy, so I was able to get more copies. And I missed out on one other book and I was able to get that so I'm happy about that so let's get this haul started and before we get started I also want to say thank you everyone for not skipping the skippable ads if you're new to my channel I always ask you to not skip the skippable ads so that way I get paid for the ad ads because if you skip the ad then we won't get the ad revenue and the ad revenue helps my channel grow so thank you everyone for not skipping the skippable ads so let's get this started, okay, you guys? All right, so the first book is the the book that I missed out on last Wednesday, and that's Cherie, uh, issue number six. Now, the reason why um, I needed to get this book is because it's the first, uh, it's the first time that Cherie meets Miles Morales, and is the first appearance of a new character called the um, Collision. First appearance of Collision. That's what it is, Collision. So, uh, and he's supposed to be like a, sort of like a, a, a teenager, sort of like a villain. So, we'll, we'll, we'll find out more as, you know, it progresses, the story progresses. I haven't had a chance to really read it, but I definitely know this was a key issue and I missed out on it. I was going to grab two copies, but then I put one back just, I just got one copy and was just, was happy with the one copy and hopefully I get some more copies later in the future for like a dollar or less so that's and this was cover price it was 3.99 and that's the cover price that was on the day it came out 3.99 so uh pay cover price for that all right so that's the first book all right now this is the book that i had gotten on wednesday but i only got one copy and i was like dang why didn't i grab more and now um when I saw them there and there was more copies and they're all near mint and they're all, they was already bagged and bored. I was like, bet. And they're still cover price. So it was the goon number one. And as you can see, it was going for three ninety nine cover price. And that was the price it was going for three ninety nine. So I was happy to get that. And I picked up one, two and three copies. So happy to get three copies of that. Now this book already on eBay is going between twelve dollars to twenty dollars. So very happy I was able to get it for cover price. And I expect this book to go up as um we get closer to eventually his movie coming out. Eventually, I don't know when it's gonna come out, but there is now that he has the rights. Like what happened was he was going through some some legal stuff with Dark Horse Comics from what I gather from the story. So now he'll be able to really go full forward with the, the movie. So we should be getting this sooner or later. So definitely be on the lookout for this book and be on the lookout for Goon Number 1, the the his first first appearance. Uh, I don't think that is in Goon Number 1. What, what was it? What is the Goon Number 1? But I just know that Goon Number 1 from back in the days is worth money so you need to get that one and get this one all right all right all right so these are the books that now i got from second charge that were in the back issue bins now these were cheaper so the first one i got is booth number one this is the first printing this is um todd mcfarland you know uh creation um now, I don't think he did the front cover, but I know he did some art inside. Now, this is the A cover, uh, the first printing. And I don't. I think this is Booth's first appearance. I'm not 100% sure. 
but it was 95 cents y'all so i couldn't leave it there for 95 cents issue number one just had to grab it all right then i was happy that they had the guardians of nowhere issue number what's this number three and this one also was 95 cents so the reason why i got this book is because the first appearance of Hala the Accuser. So, you know how I am about first appearances, you guys. So, it was two of them for the same price. So, I grabbed both of them. Now, I'm going to tell you, um, issue number one of the Guardians of Nowhere is the first appearance of U Utah, U Utan. I forgot his name, but he winds up being in the Marvel 616 universe. So... Uh, definitely look look out be on the lookout for issue one and issue number two is the second appearance but is his first appearance on the cover of issue number two so be, basically you should be on the lookout for issue one two and three of the guardians of nowhere so definitely pick those up all right then for 95 cents they had cable number 155 and this is the first appearance of Midas, Midas, uh, which was a person that was trying to kill Cable, but now is at the X, X, X Mansion <laughs> with the X-Men. So uh, definitely a character that uh, you should definitely be trying to pick up the first appearance. Never know what they're going to do with that character. But it's an interesting storyline behind that character and why he wanted to kill Cable. So if you have a chance to read the storyline, you should definitely read it. So. Happy about that. Alrighty. Another one of these. Moon Knights 188. I keep picking this up every time. This one also for 95 cents. Yeah, 95 cents. So, uh, now this is the first appearance of the Sun King. Uh, so, definitely, I'm going to keep grabbing this book every time I see it. I got uh, two copies of it within the past month for a dollar each also so this is like my third copy i done got for a dollar for less well this is less than a dollar but still i'm very happy about that all right and this one too i i keep running into this book and i'm gonna keep picking it up for a dollar every time this one is for 95 cents it's cable issue number uh 21 now, this is the first appearance of Blacksmith, which is a character that uh, that Cable is uh, one of his characters from the future that uh, comes back in the past with him. So, definitely Blacksmith is an important character, so definitely be on the lookout for that issue. Alright, now I have to say, because I was expecting to find any of these over there but i did and i was very happy when i found this one because i don't have this one i do have a lot of the dc universe variants but this is one that i don't have so i was happy i was able to get this one not only that got it for 95 cents and it's psh, perfect so it's green lantern green lantern and green arrow issue number 77 dc universe variants and for 95 cents, I could not complain at all. I, like I said, I had to say, yeah, these DC Universe variants are hot and they're going for money. So, whew, happy to add another one to the collection. All right, now this one right here, I really was happy to find because I'm loving this cover. And of course, this this book is paying homage to another cover. So it's Monsters and Mad Men number one, and this is an awesome con uh, very, uh, convention cover. And it's like I said, it's, a, it's Incredible Hulk uh, 340 homage. Uh, and as you can see, you see the reflection on the knife, Frankenstein. And I guess that's supposed to be, uh, I don't know who the, Jack the Ripper, I guess. I don't know. But. I'm really digging this cover, and it's, like I said, Awesome Con. And Awesome Con is a con that they have in D.C. And I never go to any of them because, you know, um, the thing about Awesome Con in D.C. is not like the Baltimore Comic Con. Baltimore Comic Con is a lot of artists, a lot of writers, a lot of 
comic books are being sold there. Like, it's just, it's really for comic book collectors. Um, awesome Con, to me, is more, it's not that many, it's not that many comics being sold there, and it's not that many artists and writers there. It's more like a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's more for people just getting dressed up and, you know, just being dressed up and going to it. Uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Hmm, I'm stuck. Uh, oh well. Uh, uh, what what's it called? When people just get dressed up as as superheroes or whatever, you know, whatever anime and all that stuff. I forgot what it's called, but <clears throat> it definitely isn't for awesome con. It really ain't for just comic book collectors like me. So I always wait for the Baltimore one, but. Was happy to pick this up, and this one was a dollar also, 95 cents. Yep, 95 cents, you guys, so very happy. I will always pick this up if I see it. It looks awesome, so very happy about that. And then I was really happy to find these right here because these are hard to find. Now, if you know anything about newsstands, you definitely would know that some of the hardest newsstands to find are image comic newsstands. Image comic newsstands are like rare. Um, not only that, when you do find most of most of the time when you find them, they are beat up like <laughs> spine six galore. So when you're able to find some that's a newsstand from Image Comics that doesn't have spine six, you're pretty much you got you got a rare book there. So uh, this one is Supreme number six newsstand. And as you can see the news, and it's 95 cents, you guys. So, was and this one has no ticks. It looks awesome. So, I definitely had to grab that. Whew, man. All right, and then this one also is another image. Uh, and this one is Vanguard number one newsstand for 95 cents. So that's, to be honest, this is the first time I've ever seen this one in the newsstand ever. Uh, and I've I've seen a lot of Vanguard number one uh, through my hunting. And uh, I've never seen the newsstand copy ever. So was very happy to find this newsstand and it's in perfect condition. So very happy about that. All right, now, these, this book right here, I got for 50 cents. Uh, and of course, this book doesn't go for much right now, but I'm going to tell you this. One thing I've learned uh, when it comes to some of these um, these runs of books of stories that no one ever heard of uh, is to pick them up anyway, especially issue number one. I'm going to pick up every time because if they get optioned for anything, those books go up like boop, like that. So... It's good to get these books while they're cheap for a dollar, 50 cents, whatever. So it's Throwaways number one from Image Comics. Uh, and like I said, 50 cents. I'm not going to leave it there. And it looks perfect, perfect condition. Definitely was going to grab that. And then they had another one, two of them for 50 cents. So I'm going to grab it every time. And like I said, with these, these books that, you know, just grab issue number one. No matter what 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 it is, if it's from Image Comics or an indie indie title, if you if it's an issue number one, I definitely suggest you get it if it's in mint condition, because you just never know what's gonna happen in the future if they're gonna get option for a TV show or movie or whatever. So definitely pick them up. So happy to get two of those, and I already have like I think three copies of this book already that I picked up along the way in my hunting. Uh, for the past couple two years, uh, so happy about that. And and last but not least, you guys, I had to pick up this book because um, during this run right here of Thunderbolts, Francisco Matino was doing the covers and he was killing it with the covers. So I, I you know I had I had the whole run in my last collection, but I got rid of that collection. So I'm trying to get them all again. And I, I love these covers. So it's Thunderbolts. And this is issue 137. Now, Francisco Matina kills it. I mean, the whole Thunderbolt run during that time was... Them covers were amazing. 
Now, this story is pretty awesome, you guys. Uh, basically, Norman Osborn <laughs> is, is, of course, it, during this time, he's in charge. Uh, this is after the secret invasion when he becomes in charge of um, S.H.I.E.L.D., but he turns it into, what is it, a hammer? Instead, uh, what was the hammer or whatever it was, I forgot. And then he made his own team of Avengers with all the supervillains. And then he had the Thunderbolts, um, all all the Thunderbolts doing whatever. You know, since they're villains anyway, um, he had them doing stuff, you know, that they didn't want to do. But he was making them do, you know, some, some stuff. So, anyways, in this book right here, Norma Osborn captures... Iron Fist and they're trying to like they're trying to wipe his mind to the point where he would do with he'll kill uh, superheroes you know what I'm saying so he and, and basically Norman Osborn just wants to give revenge on Luke Cage I think for something about he helped save Luke Cage's wife and then Luke Cage I did something to Norman Osborn I don't know I didn't get a chance to read that but I just know he's on a, some revenge stuff and so he captures Iron Fist, and he's trying to get uh, to the point where Iron Fist will kill Luke Cage, um, and that that be his revenge, Norman Osborn's revenge. But um, and the Thunderbolts are um, helping him do this, you know. And then um, when when they try to capture Luke Cage, uh, they do. They capture. They wind up. Um, uh, Iron Fist winds up knocking out Luke Cage with his, you know, his thing. And uh, it just so happens that um, I'm trying to remember uh, there was an Ant Man that's uh, working for the Thunderbolts at, during this time. I don't know who's who's who it is. I forgot who it is, but I know it's a villain. And it so happens that that somehow he got ingested into Luke Cage, so he's in Luke Cage, and they then try the Thunderbolts then try to get him out of there. So of course he's upset. <laughs> Because he's inside Luke Cage. But anyways, that's a side note. Um, but anyways, uh, Luke Cage uh, winds up uh, about to uh, be uh, tortured by P Paladin. Was it Paladin? It was one of the bad guys that wanted to get revenge on Luke Cage for something he did in, earlier in the book when they tried to capture him. And right when he's 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 about to turn around and, and start doing some things to Luke Cage, Luke Cage gets freed. Um, and it doesn't show who freed him. He just gets freed. Like the shackles come just come loose and he, he winds up punching the hell out of Paladin or whoever it was, the dude, before he, he was able to do anything. He like really knocked him to the, like if you see the, the, the picture of how he did it, you'll be like, damn. But anyways... Uh, then, uh, so he gets free, uh, he winds up, uh, seeing Iron Fist, and Iron Fist and him start fighting, and then eventually he winds up saying some stuff that broke through to Iron Fist, helped him break his mental, you know, thing to get free, and then they both, uh, wind up, uh, trying to get out of the building that they're in. Uh, and of course the Thunderbolts are over there trying to stop them and they're just manhandling the Thunderbolts like they're just yeah they're beating them up real bad and the thing about it was that um, they wind up uh, right when they're over there trying to get to Norman Osborn so they could get revenge on Norman Osborn they all of a sudden get teleported away and uh, Norman Osborn uh, of course he is he wants to know who freed Luke Cage so of course Ghost is telling uh tell him that it might have been Ant-Man because uh they left him inside Luke Cage <laughs> so he might you know be upset that they left him in there but the whole time it was Ghost and uh Norma Osborn knew one of them probably did it but all of them was like looking at him like nah it was none of us so um and they're all beat up and all <laughs> looking all crazy because that you know Luke Cage and, and Iron Fist beat them up, but um, Ghost um basically then told the rest of the Thunderbolts after Norman Osborn left that yeah he's the one that did it because he already knew that if Iron Fist and and basically he already knew that Norman Osborn was trying to get uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist 
brainwashed to the point where he works for them, and then he's gonna get he's gonna get Iron Fist and uh, Luke Cage to kill the Thunderbolts because he he you know because the Thunderbolts have failed him so many times that he just so Ghost was looking out for him looking out for them you know by letting Luke Cage free and he was the one that helped teleport them too so um so Ghost was like. He he was he wasn't he's he's not dumb at all. So that's the great thing about Ghost characters in the comic is that he's not stupid. He's he's very intelligent. So he he's not a dummy. You know what I'm saying? He could he could basically um the way they did him in the movie, the girl, is totally different from the comic book. In the comic book, it's a guy, and he's not dumb. He's smart. So uh, definitely definitely it would have been great to see him like that in the movies, but. I understand why they kind of went over. I mean, one thing about the movies that I've learned from, through MCU movies is that they don't stick to the comics at all, like, at all. So, um, for anyone to get mad about something they do in the MCU and they don't stick to the the comics, if you've been looking at <laughs> the Marvel movies since the first Iron Man, then you should already have gotten over it by now, like, because they are not sticking to the comic book, so if you're still getting upset about that, this, to this day, then I don't know what to tell you, but get over it, because it, it's been how many movies now that they don't stick to the comics, you know what I'm saying, they're not going to stick to the comics, they're doing their own thing in the MCU, they're definitely not doing it like the comics at all. Now, they do a couple of things here and there, but overall, if you really think about it, they're not sticking to the comic books. It just is what it is. So just enjoy the movies for what it is. So that's why it didn't bother me when they changed Ghost into a female. It didn't bother me. A lot of things don't bother me when it comes to the MCU because I already know they, they're not sticking to the comics. There ain't no point of getting upset about it, you know? All I can do is just enjoy what I'm seeing on the, the big screen and enjoying the fact that I'm getting this in my lifetime, you know, and I never thought I would. You know what I'm saying? I've been collecting comics since I was seven. I am about to be 47, so it's been almost, it's, it's 39 years, about to be 40 years. So for me to see what I'm seeing on the big screen right now is some that I never thought I was gonna see, so I'm I'm just happy. Like I can't even complain. Like I I don't want to complain because I'm getting some that I otherwise never thought I was going to get. If Disney didn't buy Marvel, we wouldn't even be getting these things. Like think about it. Like um, Marvel was trying to get it going, but that Disney money, that Disney money made it happen. I mean, think about it. I mean, we're getting some awesome awesome movies and it kind of makes me upset when people really complain about stuff like i'm just like enjoy what we're seeing like you don't under you must not understand that this wouldn't even be happening if if disney didn't buy marvel like marvel at one point was about to be bankrupt like they they went through bankruptcy and everything like so it's, it's just amazing that we're even seeing these things but of course people want to just complain about everything. I'm just like, come on. Just enjoy what you're seeing. Enjoy for what it is. And just, just you know, I guess just because I'm older and I know that we're kind of spoiled now with these movies. And we're just starting to complain about stuff. Because we feel like we deserve this and this and it should be like this. And I'm just like, nah, let's be happy with what we getting. Because for real... We're lucky we're getting this. If Marvel never bought, if Disney didn't buy Marvel, we wouldn't be getting this stuff. Like, we'd probably be getting some superhero movies still, but not like what we're getting right now. Like, it's phenomenal what we're getting. So, for all you guys out there, females that are complaining, please stop. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it for what it is. I, I mean, I, I'm just... i put it to you like this. If I was... I put it to you like this, if, if I was younger, then I probably would have a reason to complain because I'd be like, oh, we should have this, we should have that, but since I'm older and I never thought, even when I was young, I knew we could, wasn't, like, I grew up seeing, you know, what, what they was trying to put on the screen, 
and those were horrible. You know what I'm saying? What they was trying to do at the beginning, as far as movies, superhero movies, and and they were. I mean, if you go back in time now, like when the first Batman movie came out, that movie at that time was awesome because we were just like so happy. But then if you look at that movie now, you realize that it it wasn't really that great. Like Jack Nicholson did an awesome job as the Joker. But other than that, that movie really wasn't that great. But when it came out, I was like, oh, man. Because we, we just was happy, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and, and for me to see those movies and see where we at now as far as movies, superhero movies, we're light, we're way ahead. Like, it's incredible what we're seeing on the big screen right now. Like, you know, it's like, it's already past the stage of, oh, we're just glad we getting movies. We're to the stage now where, man, where we're getting not only are we glad we're getting these movies, but man, they're doing it in such an awesome way. Like they really are awesome. Like I give you an example. Um, I could go back right now, and I guarantee you, if I watch Avengers, the first Avengers movie, I guarantee you that I will be sitting there enjoying it to this day. Like I could sit right now. Is how long that movie been out? Like we're we're into the fourth Avengers movie right now. That's about to come out. So. You know, for the first Avengers movie, I could watch that right now, and I guarantee you, I'll still be, I will still enjoy it. I'll still be laughing, and I'll still get that feeling because it was, it was, it was a great, it was great. You know what I'm saying? It is, it's, and it is stand, it was standing the test of time because of how awesome it was. You know what I'm saying? Uh, certain movies, just, you know, to me. Uh, that first came out superhero movies don't st- like I give you a prime example X Men one two and three those when they first came out X, a lot of people liked X Men one and two and I did too three was just horrible but you know if I go back and try to look at those first two movies now oh my god I'm just like man what was I thinking to really enjoy those because they were horrible like let's be honest the first three X Men movies was horrible compare if you compare those to Days of Future Past and to First Class and uh, well, of course, the Apocalypse one was, eh, but um, if you compare it to First Class and Days of Future Past, those movies are way better. I mean, psh, like it makes X Men one, two, and three just garbage. You know, those are garbage, especially if you we look and look at them now. I'm telling you, you'd you be like, oh, this is. It's garbage, you know. So they did not withstand the, the test of time. Uh, let's I can prime example another one. Look at the first Fantastic, first two Fantastic Four movies. Horrible, you guys. I mean, that's what we were getting during this time that Disney did not have. You know, Marvel. We was getting like just because, of course, you know, Fantastic Four wasn't Marvel Studios didn't have nothing to do with that. But still, it's just the point we was getting these horrible movies that, you know, compared to now what we're getting, it's not even, it's not even close. So, I mean, just enjoy what we're seeing, people. Stop complaining. You don't understand. We're getting way better movies. These movies are way better than what we used to get. So, it's no need to be complaining. So, uh, one, one last thing before I leave is that I got a random act of kindness. Um, my man, uh, JBZ70, sent me, uh, another one of these Harley Quinns, number 58. Love it, love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. So this is the second one he sent me. He sent me one before for a trade, and then he sent me this one. So thank you, man. I got two of them, and I love them. And you know, this is the Chew, Chew variant. So, love it. Thank you. So, big shout out to JBEZ70. All right, you guys. So, thank you, everyone, for joining me. Uh, sorry about the rant about the movies, but I just I just had to talk about that because of the fact that, you know, this Captain Marvel thing, it just it kind of pisses me off because I'm just like, man, they're complaining about stuff that's just dumb when it comes to the Captain Marvel movie. Now, 
they don't have to enjoy the movie. I understand if they didn't like the movie or whatever, but the, the main things they've been complaining about is just ridiculous. Like, I'm just like, really? Like, that? that's that's what your complaints are? Uh, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Like, some of them were complaining about the Monica Rabot uh, thing. Like, I'm just like, okay, she's a little child in this movie. What's what's the problem? Like they're showing even in that in this movie they're showing how intelligent she is and how adventurous she is, and and the fact is that if you look at that movie was supposed to be set in the early nineties, right? Now, Endgame's supposed to be now. This uh, that's a lot of years forward. So now, if, if they was to introduce Monica Lebeau now in the timeline, she's an adult. So what's the problem? Like, and 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 you think they're in, and the thing that really makes me upset is that they're they're upset about they they're upset that she wasn't the one that was in the movie instead. And I'm just like, um, what's the problem? I mean, she obviously if they introduced her in this movie as a child and they made her very important in that movie, they they made her important. Obviously, they did it for a reason because they had plans for her. Because obviously, she's gonna be an adult in the end by the time Avengers Endgame come out. Like she's an adult, so obviously they they put her in this movie for a reason. So what's the problem, y'all? She's gonna appear. Trust and believe is an adult with powers. Trust and believe. I there's no way that she's not gonna have powers. So what's what's the problem? Like I don't understand. People, people was complaining about that. I'm just like, really? And then people was complaining about the scrolls not being bad. I'm just like, oh, God, you guys, come on. The, you, just like everybody, every other alien race in, in the Marvel Universe, you got good ones and bad ones. They decide to go with the good ones. Because, like I tell everyone, if you've been reading the comics, you know if you've read Annihilation Super Scroll, and that, in that, that miniseries... It showed that Super Scroll it could be good. Just like he's been bad for a long time, but it showed his good side. And and, and that if you read that four issue miniseries, it showed his good side. It showed him actually caring about someone besides himself. And besides just doing something for the Empire. You know, the Scroll Empire. So you're gonna have good and bad in every race. So they decided to do that in this movie. Just show some good scrolls. And in the future, they might show the bad scrolls. So what's the problem? Like, just like with the Kree, you have good Kree, bad Kree. They decide to show the Kree as bad in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I just don't understand what people are griping about. It's just crazy to me. It, it's it's ridiculous. And then as far as, you know, Brie Lawson, um, she, you know, the, the comment she made was about a whole different movie. And I understood what her comment was about and why she made that comment. If, if you guys didn't, like, really understand her whole full reason of what she was saying, then there's no reason to be throwing up all this dumb stuff to talk about, oh, she's a feminist and all that. I'm just like, really? Are you, do you guys Did you guys really, really listen to the whole thing of what she was saying? Do you really understand what she was saying? Before you just sit there and say she's a feminist, like, and even if she is, so what? This is a movie. She's doing a movie. She's playing a character, and in this movie, there was nothing <laughs> feminist about this movie. There was no line in this movie that says, "Oh, I'm a feminist," or uh, showed even talked about anything feminist. So I'm just like, what? What's the problem? Like, oh my God, you guys are just so negative. Stop being so negative all y'all lives. Y'all need some positivity in y'all life. Stop stop just being negative. It's just crazy. I, I hate negative people, man. Just stop it. You know, it's it's crazy how negative people are. People are just quick to hate someone and quick to just be judge, judgmental. And it's just crazy. I mean, what what's next, you guys? What, they're going to, an uh, actor is going to say, oh, I, don't, I hate dogs. I love cats. So what, then pe people that love dogs are going to be like, oh, he's a he's a dog hater. We can't support him. We, whatever movie he played, we're never going to go see that movie because he's a dog hater. He loves cats instead. Like, come on now. Look, this is just ridiculous. Like, this is getting out of hand. It's just stupid. Just dumb. These are actors that play characters. 
Go see the movie. Go enjoy the movie for what it is. Enjoy their performance. They're playing a character. Enjoy the performance they gave for the movie. Don't worry about their personal, private life and whatever opinions they have in their personal, private lives. That's their private stuff. Like, if it's not affecting you in any type of way, then well, what's your point of getting mad? Like, I just don't understand. <sighs> I can't believe I'm ranting this much. It's just ridiculous. But anyways, all right, everybody. Like I said, if you didn't enjoy the Captain Marvel movie, hey, I can understand if you didn't enjoy it because you didn't like the movie. But anything else other than that, man, all that political stuff and all that, y'all need to put that to the side. We're getting comic book hero movies that I never thought we'll see in our lifetime, and you should just enjoy it. Enjoy it, you guys. Especially if you love comics. You need to just enjoy what you're seeing. Uh, so that's it, you guys. Um, I, uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel and you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the Galactus head right here to subscribe. Hit these two videos, old videos right here to see some old good stuff. And until next time, everybody, peace.